Confessing an affair to your spouse is one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do. It can feel like your entire world is about to crumble. But the truth is, with the right approach, it can be the first step towards healing and rebuilding trust. Hi, my name is Hassani Pettiford, an infidelity recovery specialist with 20 years of experience, 15 books, and over a thousand restored marriages. And I'm here to guide you with proven strategies and expert advice. So let's get started. The best way to deliver this message is to prepare a written monologue. A written monologue is simply a letter that you've crafted that really explains and articulates exactly what happened. And the reason why you wanna do this is because you want time to think it through, to process what you wanna say, to put your messaging uh, in a sequential order, to be very careful with your word choice, because when you just talk things out and talk things through, you may miss critical elements, you may use words that are triggering and set your spouse off. So thinking it through and preparing a script is the number one best way to do it. Now in your letter, you have to explain not only what you did, but why you did what you did. Now when you explain the why, this is not an opportunity to blame your spouse for what they did or didn't do, how they did or did not show up in the relationship, because regardless of what they did, you made the decision to do what you did. So you have to take full responsibility and you have to show yourself accountable. Now, while it may be true that both of you are contributors to the relational state of affairs that you find yourself in, it was you who made the decision to do what you did. But the message doesn't end there. You have to conclude with your willingness to do whatever it takes to restore the relationship and to win back your spouse's trust. Next, you have to express genuine regret and remorse. This is critically important because a lot of times the betrayed spouse is not convinced that there's any remorse, that you have any type of regret for what you did. Fine, you admitted you had an affair and you asked for forgiveness, but where's your personal struggle? Where's the personal crisis that you're going through? Where are your tears? Where are your emotions? Where is your outward expression of the pain that you're going through? See, oftentimes the betrayed spouse wants you to respond like they respond. So if they're crying, they wanna see your tears. If they're enraged, they wanna see some type of emotion from you. But when you are stale and cold and emotionless, it is not convincing at all. It will come across as manipulative. So one of the things that you wanna do is not to just admit that you were wrong, but talk about the internal struggle that you're having, the guilt, the shame, the embarrassment, the humiliation, how you didn't just betray your spouse, but you felt like you betrayed yourself. Share the triggers that you're going through. Share the thoughts and the feelings that you're struggling with. Talk about your faults, your fears, your failures. When you begin to reveal to them the pain that you're going through as a result of what you did to your spouse, it gives an indication that he is human. She does have a heart. Maybe they do care. And it gives them hope of the possibility of a restored relationship. Now, when you make the decision to tell your spouse about your affair, you have to be prepared for their reaction. Now, you may not know what their reaction is going to be, but you have to be prepared that there will be a reaction. Now, some people immediately respond in anger. Others have a knee-jerk reaction to become emotional and begin to cry. But there are others who sit in silence. They have a delayed reaction. And so it appears as if they took it well, but then days later, weeks later, there's an uproar of emotions that you didn't see coming. It's because it took them time to process it. See, when a person is in shock, they may not have the typical response that you would expect. So you have to know that there's a journey that they're gonna go through now that they're in what we call the discovery phase. So from the day that they discover it, that's D-Day, to the time when they finally get help, that entire season is the discovery phase. And it is the most emotionally volatile phase in the recovery process. And a whole lot of destructive, evil, wicked, diabolical, painful things can come out of a person and a couple uh, when they first discover the pain of an affair. Now, I also want you to be on high alert because for many people, when they first hear about such devastating news, it has a physical impact on their body. You gotta understand that there are many people who will hyperventilate. 
Their heart begins to pound. Their hands begin to shake. Their eyes are bulging through their sockets. They're crying. They're experiencing a heightened sense of emotions that they've never experienced before. They're in shock. They're in dismay. They feel rejected, abandoned, betrayed, violated, abused. And so whatever their reaction may be, you have to express empathy. Next, you have to offer a plan for moving forward. You know, to reveal some information like this and to not have a plan, to not have a next step, would be irresponsible. And so you've already in your mind have got to have a plan in place. And so the best recommendation would be to find a counselor, find someone who can guide you both through a recovery process. Someone, of course, who specializes in infidelity recovery. And so if their knee-jerk reaction is to reject any attempt to restore the relationship, shift the focus on their personal healing. And the last step is to be patient and to give it time. Now listen, Rome was not built in a day and your relationship will not be restored in the blinking of an eye. It's going to be a process and you've got to be committed to it. They're going to be in a space of ambivalence, not knowing whether they want to stay or they want to go. They're going to love you one moment, hate you the next, want this relationship one moment and not want it the next. And you've got to be okay in knowing that they're in a season of trying to figure things out. And so your patience, your emotional stability, and your consistency is going to be critically important in a time where they seem to be inconsistent, unstable, and erratic and all over the place. And so just know that rebuilding takes time and that healing is a process. Now remember, confessing an affair is never easy, but it is a critical step forward in your recovery process. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Now, if you're a couple in crisis, on the verge of a breakup or a divorce, or struggling with the pain of infidelity, and you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, or would like to attend our last chance weekend, go to couplesacademy.org and set up a free discovery call by clicking the link in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. And remember, you're not alone in this journey. And if you need any help along the way, reach out to Couples Academy for support.